Another interesting fact is that the velocity vector of this mass is the vertical component of the velocity vector of this point. The vertical component of this velocity is this vector here. It's equal to the velocity vector of the mass. So how can we show that? Well, this angle in here is actually the same as this angle here. It's omega t plus phi. You can see that omega t plus phi lies between two lines which happen to be perpendicular to this line and this line. This line here is perpendicular to this line because this line is a tangent to the circle at this point and here's the radius the line from the center to the point of contact of the tangent and the other two lines are obviously perpendicular this line is a is the vertical component of this vector and this line here is obviously a horizontal line so we multiply the magnitude of this vector which is omega a by the cos of this angle in here to get the side adjacent to it which is the vertical component of omega a in this right angle triangle let's see it in this applet now I have selected velocity instead of displacement so you will see the velocity vector for the mass and you will also see the velocity vector for the point on the circle Let's just pause through this. This looks like the picture that we just saw. You can see that the vertical component of the velocity vector of the point is, is the velocity vector for the mass. So the velocity of the mass reaches its maximum at, well, when the mass passes through the equilibri equilibrium point. So roughly here, the mass is passing through the equilibrium point, so its velocity is a maximum, its velocity vector is a maximum. And you can see that the vertical component of the point's velocity is just the same as the velocity of the point. the same here the vertical component of this vector is practically the same as this vector itself so that's the maximum value of the vertical component the maximum value of the vertical component is the velocity vector which we saw is omega a that's the magnitude of this vector is omega a that's the maximum value of the velocity of the mass Finally, let's consider the acceleration of the mass. The acceleration of the mass is got by differentiating the velocity with respect to time. If we differentiate the cos function, we get minus sine. Then we multiply by the derivative of the angle, which is omega. So we'll have omega times omega, giving omega squared. And we have a here again. So we get minus omega squared a sine omega t plus phi. We know that since the sine function lies between minus 1 and plus 1 we've seen that already then the acceleration must lie between minus omega squared a and plus omega squared a we just take plus or minus this quantity here like we did before for the velocity we saw that the uh, velocity lies between minus omega a and plus omega a very similar here because we're dealing with a sinusoidal function it lies between minus 1 and plus 1 so minus omega squared a times sine omega t plus phi will lie between minus omega squared a and plus omega squared a 
So that tells us that the maximum magnitude of the acceleration of the mass is omega squared a. I say magnitude because this is a positive quantity. Omega squared is positive and a, the amplitude, is usually given as a positive quantity. Now, how does the maximum acceleration of the mass relate to the acceleration of its projection on this circle of radius a? Well, from the theory of uniform circular motion, we know that the acceleration of the point on the circle is omega squared times the radius of the circle. But the radius of the circle is a, so the acceleration of the point is omega squared a. You might also know that that acceleration vector points towards the center of the circle. So here's the acceleration vector. Its magnitude is omega squared times a. a is the radius of the circle. Now here is the picture of the acceleration vector for the mass. Now the acceleration vector is just a scaled version of the force because by Newton's second law, F equals ma. That means that if we know the acceleration vector, we essentially have the force vector. The constant of proportionality is a positive constant. M is positive. So if the acceleration points in this direction, say, then the force points in exactly the same direction. We just scale by this factor m. If we double the acceleration, we double the force. F is proportional to a. So knowing the acceleration, we essentially know the force. We just multiple scale this factor by m. So we can see here that the force drops to zero when the mass passes the equilibrium position. So let's just see the mass at the equilibrium position. The forces or the acceleration is zero. By the way, the acceleration is the vertical component of the acceleration of this point. take the vertical component of this vector, we will have the acceleration of the mass. Here we can see that the vertical component of this vector is just the vector itself, and this vector has magnitude omega squared a. So the acceleration of the mass at this instant has magnitude omega squared a. This is the maximum acceleration of the mass. When the mass is in this position, the magnitude of its acceleration is also omega squared a. The magnitude of its acceleration is a maximum. Notice that the acceleration always points downwards until the mass reaches its equilibrium position then the acceleration is pointing up while the mass is below the equilibrium position, changes direction, acceleration or force pointing down until we get back to the equilibrium position where the acceleration or force are once again zero.